Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Elena Marquez Segura. This is Laia Turmo Vidal. Uh, and we have Asrin Rostami over there and Annika Vern, our supervisor. We come from Uppsala University and Mobile Life at Stockholm University. Uh, designing considering the aesthetic experience is challenging. It is difficult, but it is important. And since the so-called third wave in ATI, there, there has been a marked focus on the aesthetic experience that the technology can enable. Uh, and this, has, this challenge has been heightened when, when research and practices have focused on embodied experiences. Yet often, uh, it remains a secondary consideration in HCI practice. And we think this is particularly the case with movement-based interactive systems that have been primarily technology-centered. And by that we mean that the technology has been the focus of design, but also the main driver, driver for the design process. And this has often mean uh, that technology limitations have constrained design possibilities. In the paper, we talk about some of these issues, uh, the fact that some important interactional aspects have been uh, pushed to the background, or the fact that the body gets to instrumentalize and constrained and how these sometimes uh, make that uh, the design vocabulary that we have is a little bit narrow. And most importantly, uh, the fact that movements and bodily experience are brought too late in the design process. So we operate in the design domain of movement-based play that happens in a co-located and social setting. Our design approach is technology-supported, uh, contrasted to technology-sustained. Uh, these are concepts intro introduced by Bern, and the difference between them is that with technology-supported su approaches, you have the technology supporting partially the experience, uh, compared to technology-sustained approaches where you have the technology responsible for sustaining the whole experience. So uh, our approach is technology-supported, uh, but the, the question then arises if the technology is just one aspect that supports the experience. What else can support it? Uh, in previous papers, we were talking about the design resources in this design domain, and uh, we think that there are these other ones. So you have physical and digital artifacts. You have what we call the social-spatial setting, that is the role of the players, the way they are distributed in the space, um, and also the rules of the game. With our paper, we had the goal of, we focused on the deviation phase, uh, the, the beginning of the design process, and what we wanted to do is to, we were thinking about how, how can you uh, implement, how can you take this technology-supported approach? And in particular, we wanted to bring uh, movements and bodily experiences early in the design process and to use play and playfulness to support creativity. There is a bunch of ideation methods that you all know. You have the personas, the scenarios, and we are particularly interested in these symbolic ideation methods, some methods that uh, make use of the bodily and situated experience of designers and informants to inform design. We introduce embodied sketching as a characterization of design practices in the domain of embodied interaction that foregrounds the embodied experience for the exploration of and the design for particularly interesting physical and social activities. So how do you do that? By physically enga engaging with simple actions and activities that are constituent of or essential to the body activity uh, that you design for. And by looking into and trying how different res design resources integrate and blend together to support and give rise to play activities. In the paper, we have three different instantiations of this embodied sketching uh, practice, uh, and here we are going to focus mainly on the first one. So our first case was conducted in a joint international research collaboration with the people at Exertion Games Lab at the, the RMIT in Australia. We wanted to build on the core activity of hanging, in which we were interested and that the Exertion Games lab group had already been explored and included in a game called Hanging of a Bar. The goal was to generate a collection of game ideas that use the concept of hanging. So five designer researchers, four PhD students and one at the master's level participated in the workshop. 
We hang from an eyelet in the ceiling a TRX, which is a fitness artifact that enables hanging and suspension. Moreover, we also brought in other play artifacts, for instance, a Pilates ball, steel foam swords, a basketball ball, and a skateboard. And we also introduced basic principles from brainstorming, like all ideas would be welcome, the more the better. And we told participants to withhold criticism and not to overthink about feasibility issues. Furthermore, we also introduced turn-taking as a way of regulating participation, and we encourage a show-don't-tell attitude and to explore ideas until exhaustion. So 10 ideas emerged from the 30 minutes workshop, which we present here in what we call the body storming bread. We, where we also depict artifacts used, the technology and vision, and the rules governing play, among other things. We call each game idea an embodied sketch, which is the smallest unit represented here. Some of these embodied sketches were very similar to one another, and they emerged as variations of the first one. So here they are grouped together in a note that you can see in the zoom bits. Technology was also quite present during the workshop. For instance, participants envisioned what technology would do in some of the ideas, like in one of the embodied sketches where participants envisioned projections on the floor that had to be avoided by somebody on a skateboard. Participants also simulated technology often by using the artifacts around to fake its functionality, which allowed them to experience potential strengths and weaknesses. In general, the ideation process was mainly shaped by the artifacts and the core mechanics. Some ideas visibly worked, which could be seen by the reaction of the participants, whereas others obviously didn't and they were rapidly iterated. An example of an idea that worked is depicted in the sequence of images that you can see at the left of the slide. In this idea, the participants had to step on top of a Pilates ball while grabbing the TRX in order to try to, to maintain the balance. Uh, all the participants tried out this idea and engaged with it longer than with other ones. And finally, in other cases, uh, some ideas require some tweaking, like in the example also depicted here, where a person was grabbing the TRX and it was he was supposed, or she, <laughs> to avoid envision projections on the floor while on top of the skateboard. Uh, the skateboard constrained the movement of the player too much, and some participants decided that it could be good to try it with another artifact, in this case, a ball. So this case illustrates what it means to use embodied sketching early in the design process. We managed to open up the design space with a collection of game ideas that had, had hanging at their core. Moreover, we were also able to sketch ideas that make use of different arrangements of a variety of design resources, and we were also able to understand how these resources intertwine to support each embodied sketch. This case is an example of how designers can shift the locus of design attention from the technology to the activity, allowing them to think about novel ways of using different arrangements of design resources in service of the activity. These resources go beyond the technology, including physical artifacts and the players themselves. And this is our second case, which we call sensitizing designers, that deepens the insights obtained from the previous body storming case. Uh, the previous case was useful in creating an understanding on how different artifacts could contribute to a range of working game ideas. However, important aesthetics aspects of the experience of hanging were underexplored, in particular to the first person some aesthetic perspective, and what was interesting and exhilarating from a felt and lift body perspective. Therefore, the second workshop was developed as a way to delve deeper into these aspects. The workshop revolved around a somatic practice that makes heavy use of hanging, which is called anti-gravity fitness, and you can see an image of this in the slide. One of us co-authors is an instructor of anti-gravity, and we organized a class that focused around hanging and suspending the body weight in different forms and using a hammock. The idea was to use this shared experience in a later brainstorming to uncover interesting experiential qualities and concepts. In the paper, we have more details about the results from this session, including several themes about the felt experience related to the different elements that sustain the activity, such as spatial and social aspects, and as well as the hammock itself. This case, as well as the previous one, are examples of embodied sketching practices that focus on physical engaging with simple actions and activities that are constituent of or essential to the bodily activity that you design for. In particular, this case example, example sorry, <laughs> focuses on the use of a shared lived experience to sensitize designers to salient attributes of their in-the-moment felt experience, which can then be used in design. The last case um, we call participatory embodied sketching. Um, this was part of the design, uh, design iteration of the Oribo, that little toy there. And that's a movement-based uh, game platform created by Jim Moen and commercialized by Moving to Fun. 
Uh, the device is a, a ball-shaped interactive toy that runs on that leash that you see there that you would hold with your eyes wide open or with your hands wide open. Uh, and it uh, runs on the leash and it gives the user feedback in terms of the movement uh, and then uh, its visuals, the eyes on the display and also sounds. <coughs> and it can sense the participants' uh, movements. The toy was meant to encourage children to explore and expand the, their bodily repertoire of movements to explore the space. Uh, however, the already implemented games had not met this expectation. Firstly, the games uh, encourage artifact focus type of interaction, like you see in the picture, uh, as the players had to rely heavily on the, uh, the, the device display for feedback and guidance. Secondly, the repertoire of movements that the games require was very constrained uh, to the limitations of the technologies. At the point in the design process uh, when this embodied sketching session was organized, we already had in place several small games implemented in the technology, and we wanted to try it, uh, and see how these original games could be enriched by using different play patterns and social spatial arrangements of the players. Uh, we also wanted to see how the children responded to design constructs that were more or less sustained by other design resources than the technology. We organized a series of workshops in, we, in which we first let the children play freely with the mobile platform, like you see on the right, on your left, um, uh, the different variations of the games, and then we, we created some other variations that made use of the implemented functionality of the device. So you see the second picture, the picture in the center is uh, the collaborative uh, version of the first game, and then you have a com the competitive uh, variation. So. Two aspects uh, I want to highlight from this embodied sketching session. One was the, the fact that as designers, we could tweak some aspects of the games uh, on the spot. So since the design resources that you have are uh, more than the technology, the technology was the only component that was kind of fixed. The rest we could, we could change, gauging the effect and the reaction of the children, which was uh, very, very useful. What we weren't expecting was that the children would do that themselves, and uh, how, how could we miss that? Of course they did. They were tweaking the game so that they, 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 the play activity suited what they wanted to do at the moment, and they even created games. So they realized here that when they placed the Oribo in a vertical position, the, the toy would like move up. So they started creating races. Some takeaways from this uh, um, embodied sketching. Uh, this workshop could uh, very well be a follow-up of uh, a body storming one. It can be held early in the design process, but once the technology is somehow in place, even if it's um, as a mock-up or a prototype, this is used, the, the technology is used as a fixed design resource that it is tested, but most importantly, that it is used as a base upon which new designs can emerge. And these designs uh, include other important resources uh, that are left open for appropriation, such as the rules that govern play and the role and social spatial configurations uh, of the players. So our embodied sketching design practice is similar to other embodied ideation methods presented in the background of the paper in that they all uh, make use of, the, of this embodied approach to design given how they harness the situated physical and social context for creating and gauging uh, design ideas. However, uh, there are five characterizing principles that we want to highlight here that differentiate our uh, design practice from others. First, embodied sketching is activity center uh, in that the goal is to design enjoyable social and physical activities that are technology, uh, technology supported instead of uh, sustained. Second, um, an important difference is that in embodied sketching, contextual elements are used as design resources and not only as a, as a backdrop against which you evaluate your design ideas. Then we take advantage of a very physical and hands-on engagement of designers with a non-scripted activity. In other methods, uh, you see often how they make use of scripted scenarios or role-playing role activities. 
then we use uh, uh, physical um, play and movement not only as goals but also as design vehicles, as tools to get to those goals. And finally, previous methods emphasize early prototyping testing. Uh, while we focus on initial explorative ideation phases as a way to open up the design space at the experiential level. I think we got uh, the 15 minutes. Thank you very much. We are ready to take your questions. <laughs>